now available on Instagram. Hello, this is Jasmina. I am live and this is Fashion News, a show where I bring you news about fashion. But let's get into our scheduled program. First up, let's talk about some fashion collaborations that are coming up. Y Project, the Parisian fashion brand that is run by Glenn Martins and Melissa Shoes, the Brazilian shoe company famous for their jelly shoes, are having a shoe collaboration. It is actually a pair of Rococo inspired glass slippers that make me think of Marie Antoinette and Cinderella. This is just a fashion fantasy and I love it so much. I would really love to get my hands on a pair. They're going to be out in May and they're going to be retailing for $250. At first I actually thought that this was a little bit of an odd pairing in a collaboration but for fall winter 18 Y Project actually collaborated with Uggs and they came out with a few different versions my favorite being the classic Ugg reimagined in a high heel and Melissa Shoes actually has really built their business on fashion collaborations. Some of my favorites are from Jean-Paul Gaultier and Mugler both in the early 80s and from there they've done collaborations with so many designers, including Vivian Westwood, Comme des Garçons, Karl Lagerfeld, Victor and Rolf, and so many more. So yeah, this collaboration is coming out in May, and I'm super excited to get a pair of my own class slippers. Okay, another collaboration that I'm really looking forward to is the H&M and Simone Row Shop that is coming up on March 11th online and in select stores. So from the pictures, it just looks like her luxury namesake label. And I'm sure the materials are a lot cheaper, but also the price tag is a lot cheaper. She's actually also debuting menswear and children's wear, which she's never done before. I will be putting a little reminder for myself because I definitely want to get a few pieces. I'm really excited about this collaboration. I haven't been this excited about any of the H&M collaborations collaboration since the Comme des Garçons collaboration. Maybe it's because of the quarantine and stuff that this seems very exciting for me, but yeah, I'm excited. And the last collaboration I wanted to talk about was the Margiela and Reebok collaboration. Earlier this year in January, Reebok and Margiela did release a tabby sneaker that was part of the initial drop. And that was this hand painted colorway. And now this new collaboration is an all black and an all white leather version. That is coming out actually on tonight, February 25th at 9 p.m. I would really love to get a white pair, but I feel like it's not gonna be possible. I don't know. I'll give it a try. Leave me a comment if you try. Up next, Y Project in the news again. It's a popular day for Y Project, I guess. Glenn Martins, the Y Project creative director, was also appointed the creative director of Diesel in October of 2020. And he is the first creative director at Diesel in 42 years. So Diesel, which is founder Renzo Rosso's denim empire, has been struggling for a while. And in March of 2019, they actually filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. So this appointment of a new creative director is probably their way of reinvigorating the brand and bringing Diesel to a new generation. I guess maybe I'm old. I still remember when Diesel was an it brand and it hasn't been an it brand for quite a while. And I think it would be really cool to see what Glenn Martin's can do with the denim giants. Earlier this month, Rihanna and LVMH announced that they would be putting operations on hold at Fenty. They're not cutting ties completely because LVMH now plans to focus on Fenty Beauty and Fenty Skincare. To me, this is actually really sad news. Not only was Rihanna the first woman to create an original LVMH brand, but she was the first woman of color to oversee a new house for the luxury group. This partnership was also very interesting because it was a new way that a luxury brand was created that's never been done before. And it is a shame that it's coming to an end for now. But I guess this proves that even Rihanna had a difficulty selling luxury clothing during a pandemic. Actually, other LVMH news, LVMH's Moet Hennessy has purchased 50% stake in Armand de Brignac, champagne producer owned by Jay-Z. This is just another sign of LVMH's understanding of the importance of a close relationship to hip hop culture. Moving on to some Kylie Jenner news. And this is not so much, I guess, Kylie Jenner news, but the other day on her stories, Kylie Jenner posted a pair of what looked like a pair of Birkenstocks, but they 
they were in an orange or mez box. I'm not sure how this is pronounced. Um, I'm guessing it's mischief. But this company basically gifted Kylie Jenner a pair of Hermes Birkenstocks. They're custom made by them and they're not affiliated with Hermes, nor are they affiliated with Birkenstock. On their website, they say they make these Birkenstocks by purchasing authentic Birkins and then completely destroying them. Their price points range from $34,000 to $76,000. If you can actually afford to buy this and you're actually thinking about it, just don't buy this. Just don't. On to a fun trend. Plastic jewelry is just having a moment right now. From really cool plastic rings to choker necklaces that are very reminiscent of childhood. I don't know, maybe everyone just got really into crafting during the quarantine and these new jewelry trends are just kind of an offshoot of that. And it's definitely being picked up by a lot of celebrities and influencers. Both Bella Hadid and Dua Lipa have been definitely seen wearing the trend. I actually think it's super cute and it doesn't take itself too seriously. And for an adult wearing something like this, I don't know, it's just something that puts you in a good mood. There's this really cute Instagram bead shop that's called Ian Charms and they sell these custom pieces so you can order something that's really one of a kind. Another really cute label is the Spanish label by Adriana Monso and it's called La Monso and she was actually inspired by her grandmother who used to collect plastic jewelry. I just really love all her pieces. I think they're so fun and special. And then there's the more known Sandy Liang and she actually has this capsule collection of jewelry that's very on trend. She has everything from rings and earrings and necklaces and everything is inspired by 90s nostalgia. And then actually on a more luxury price point there is Balenciaga and they're selling this logo beaded choker for $650 and yeah they're probably one of the first luxury brands that I've seen that have really picked up on this trend. I do want to order a necklace from this line called I hope I'm pronouncing this right I think it's called Iliu. I actually noticed their necklaces being worn by uh, the new fashion icon Harry Styles and I love everything from this jewelry line and all the pearls are actually freshwater pearls and I think this line for me is a little bit of a fun way to dabble in this trend and still look really grown up while doing it. Menswear news, there was a story I actually saw on the Diet Prada Instagram account that really piqued my interest. The menswear label Bodhi by designer Emily Bodhi has been around since 2016. And she's very much credited with starting a new era in menswear by upcycling antique quilts and other fabrications and turning them into very cool reimagined menswear pieces that the modern man wants to wear. Bodhi is definitely part of this zeitgeist for quilts and clothing. And it's a definite trend that can be seen everywhere. And every major brand at this point has their own version of a quilt to jacket. Recently a new menswear brand called Stan Clothing came out and it's been getting a lot of publicity and actually a lot of comparison to Bowie. So Stan Clothing is a new label by 23 year old Tristan Detweiler who is a surfer and a TikToker from San Diego and he just debuted his collection and both the press and the public have really pointed out that there are eerie similarities to Stan Clothing and Bowie. It seems like both brands are kind of a similar idea idea with a similar mission statement and similar quilts and styles and aesthetics. But Stan Clothing has actually gotten a lot of good press and attention as well. New York Times article celebrates the brand and points out that Tristan Detweiler is very handsome. Handsome surfer with apostles locks is a direct quote from the first paragraph of the article. And the article goes on to describe him as a member of a woman's sewing circle. This is the New York Times. It's really giving him great exposure and publicity. Actually, the Dye Prada post was really interesting. They really touch on a deeper issue. Part of their post states in December, New York Times reported that sewing was back because men were publicly participating, calling it a long neglected hallmark. The home sewing's popularity has been on the rise for years, mostly led by women. Why does it take men, especially handsome ones with apostles locks to validate it? I think what that really calls out is that in our culture, things are not newsworthy until men are doing it. And we've come to an end. Let's wrap up our fashion news with a look back at a moment in fashion history. For today's episode, I picked Prada Spring 2009 because this is a story of going down, but getting back up. This ill-fated runway show was a total disaster. The shoes just weren't right. I'm sure someone got fired and many models almost broke their legs. But guess what? 
Prada continued like nothing happened. Just like the models on the Prada runway, if you fall, just get right back up. And if you like this video, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.